Welcome to Jon Snow Labs Spark NLP video series. In this tutorial, we're going to review how to use Spark NLP on Python. So let's begin. Here I am running Linux Ubuntu, but the instructions should be roughly the same on a Windows environment. The only thing is that you would need to apply the same commands equivalent on Windows. The rest should be the same. So let's begin. Spark NLP extends Apache Spark. So let's begin with how can we use Spark on Python? Just Spark, not yet Spark LP. So there are roughly two ways. The first way is by downloading Apache Spark to your system, extracting it in a folder, which for me it's located in here in Home Safe Apps Spark, which you'll have these folders and running PySpark. For me, this is the preferred way because using PySpark directly will create the Spark session for us. So if this is the case, we need to export a variable called Spark Home pointing to that location and then export the path environment variable with an update containing that new Spark Home library in the binary folder. With this, we should be able to run PySpark like this and this will basically start a PySpark shell for us which is basically a Python shell with a Spark session already running so this is very useful and very simple the second way is slightly different let's say you don't download Spark to your system but you do have Python in that case what would you do is start Python and try to create a Spark session because Spark is not defined in a standard Python shell. So if we will have to do from PySpark.sql import Spark session. But this will also fail because there's no module in PySpark, of course. So we need to exit and basically do Python 3 mo module pip or pip install PySpark. Let's force install 2.4.4. So what will the, this will do is basically download PySpark as a Python module. I will pause the video and we'll be back once this finishes. Okay, so once it finished, you'll notice it will install two modules, Py4j and PySpark. So Py4j is a dependency in order to be able to connect Spark to the JVM. Before, the PySpark installation was doing that for us. So now let's try again. We open a Python shell, and now we can import PySpark.sql, import Spark session, and this will now work. So now let's try again. Let's create a variable called Spark, and into it call Spark session dot builder dot get or create parentheses if this won't work we need to import from PySpark SQL import spark session and then retry perfect so this will start a spark session for us and just like we did with PySpark we now have a spark session okay so these are the two ways we have to use spark in Python basically there is one more thing we don't usually work in a shell. Something very popular is the Jupyter Notebook. So if we do install Jupyter Notebooks, how do we start Jupyter Notebook with Spark? So as we were saying, if I just start Jupyter Notebook, it's just like any other Python shell. So I create a Python Notebook and then I do the same from PySpark SQL import Spark session and then spark equals spark session builder get or else get or create. So this will start a spark session for us. There are many important settings in the spark session that are not belonging to this specific video, but you should take a look in the spark documentation, such as the local master, the RAM assigned, the usage of memory and other settings. So let's resume. 
So, if we wanted to start PySpark like we did in the very beginning with a Spark session pre-started for us and Jupyter, we need to, de to do a few more things. Let's close this Jupyter notebook and we need to e export a few environment variables. One of them is called export PySpark Python, call it Python 3. Export PySpark driver Python and we put Jupyter and export PySpark driver Python OPTS notebook. As soon as we do this, the moment we start PySpark, it will open a Jupyter notebook instead. And now if we open a notebook and we write down Spark, Spark session has already been started for us. This is the way I prefer. Okay, so now let's see how can we add Spark LP to the Spark formula. Okay, there are many ways of doing this. If we opt for the Python PySpark as a Python module, then we will definitely be starting it with Jupyter Notebook, right? In this case, once the notebook opens and we create a new notebook, there's some slight change that we need to tell PySpark to include the dependencies of Spark LP. So we do again from PySpark.sql import Spark session. Then we create a variable called Spark, which will have our Spark session, and we do Spark session builder. Now we add config and call a config called spark.jars.packages. The content of this config will be John Snow Labs colon spark dash lp colon 2.2.2 and then get or create so if we do this basically the spark session on the jvm side will have spark lp installed now if we do from spark lp import sorry from spark lp dot annotator import asterisk we will get the Python module automatically installed for us as well. So this will already work if we decide to create a tokenizer. Now, what happens if we want to do it some other way? Okay. Now, a different story is that there's some caveat here to know. First, we used spark.jars.packages. This is basically a Databricks repository that basically handles dependencies of Spark and include both the JVM side, which is included in our Spark session, and also the Spark, the Python module, which allowed us to do this import. If we want to use the Maven central dependencies, these packages would be slightly different. It would look like something like this: com that just no labs dot nlp colon spark dash lp underscore 2.11 because of the Scala version colon 2.2.2 so what happens if we restore the kernel with this change so if we do this this will download and install these dependencies on the spark session let's give it a few seconds and once it's finished when we call from sparklp.annotator import asterisk, this will fail. So notice that difference. The Databricks repository we used before does include the Python module of sparklp. However, the Maven central dependencies only deal with the JVM side. So this is up to our preference. But if we hit on this case and we for some reason need to use the Maven central repositories, we will just need to open a new terminal and call python3 mpip install spark lp in the 2.2.2 version. Once this is installed, basically we should be able to import this and use spark lp. So right now we have two ways of doing this. A third way is let's say for some reason you have problems with proxies and, or anything and you want to download the Spark LP or build your own build, in that case you can use Spark jars and pass the path to your jar. 
So this is for more advanced use cases, so I will not cover this here. Okay, let's go back to another use case. Let's see to my preferred use case, which is with a Spark session already pre-started for us. To do that, I will need to exit. And at the moment I do PySpark, I need to add the dependencies here, which is basically dash dash packages. And I do the Jon Snow Labs, colon Spark MLP, colon 2.2.2. This one will use the Databricks repository, which includes the Python dependencies. So if we open our notebook in progress, you will see that we don't need this Spark creation anymore. And Spark session is already created for us, and it will have the Spark MLP annotators ready to import. Another way, again, I'm following the same reasoning, if instead of this link I put the Maven link, it will happen the same. The only difference is I will need the pip package. Perfect. So as you can see now, there are multiple ways to add Spark MLP to the dependencies. Hope this video was useful for you and let's keep in touch for further videos. Bye-bye.